You can shoot down UAVs. Dude, you can shoot down UAVs. If you've played a lot of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare over the last two years, you already understand that this is one of those changes that makes you sort of stop and say, oh, dude, what? And shooting down UAVs is just one of the things that's been done to make Modern Warfare 2 different and better than its predecessor. There are a ton of little changes like that that make you sort of flip out the first time you see it. If you aren't already steeped in the minutia of the previous game, you'll probably take one look at the multiplayer and write it off as being the same game. While that's not an entirely invalid perspective, the tons of little changes are really interesting, and they reinvigorate a multiplayer-focused game that's still going strong after two years of intense popularity. Oh, and there's single player, too. But let's talk more about the multiplayer. Modern Warfare 2 allows up to 18 players to go at it in a variety of traditional first-person shooter game types, like Team Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, Control Point games, and so on. Some are more tactical than others, and most of them are returning modes from Infinity Ward's last game. It, of course, has all new maps to go along with all this. There are 16 maps to play on, in fact, offering a variety of shapes, sizes, and settings. I think Wasteland, which is a wide open map with a cave in the middle and buildings around the edges, is the only one that I don't much care for because it's a little sniper heavy. It's the little changes, though, that refine Modern Warfare 2, and if you've played a significant amount of the first Modern Warfare game, the game feels dramatically different, even though the core action is largely unchanged. A lot of those changes come via refinements and expansions upon the persistent perks concept that became a big mainstream success via Call of Duty 4. So additions like Death Streaks, which reward you with a one-time bonus if you die three times in a row without killing anyone on the opposing team, or configurable kill streak bonuses actually make all the difference in the world. Though you only bring three kill streak bonuses into a match with you, there's a much longer list of them now, and you can unlock these and select which three you want to bring. There's a lot more than just UAVs, airstrikes, and choppers now. Actually, there are multiple types of airstrikes, like a stealth bomber that doesn't show on your radar when it strikes, or a set of Harrier jets that bomb just like a regular old airstrike, but then the last one sticks around for a bit, hovering above the battlefield and gunning down enemies. Then there's all new killstreak bonuses like the Supply Crate, which drops from a helicopter and randomly contains one of the other killstreak bonuses. This adds an interesting element of randomness to the multiplayer, since it only takes four kills to get a Supply Crate, but you might get a user-controllable AC-130 or Chopper Gunner out of it, which are devastating bonuses that can put one team out in front fast, unless the other team shoots down the air support before it can do too much damage. Some changes to the way the weapons are allocated, namely the thought that rocket launchers and shotguns are secondary weapons, not primary ones, makes shooting down enemy support easier and vital. All right, I could go on and on about the competitive multiplayer, but it'll suffice to say that it's a better game that doesn't lose the feel of the developer's previous release in the process. The game also has a cooperative mode called Special Ops. It's a series of two-player missions, most of which have been built using chunks of the environment from the single-player game. There are 23 missions that cover a lot of ground, giving you stealth missions where you try to snipe your way from one end to the other, or battles that pit you against hordes of enemy troops. I think my favorite two missions have one player on the ground while the other is up in an AC-130 or a helicopter, providing cover from the air. All of them require a level of patience, strategy, and skill to complete the higher difficulty settings, though since one player can revive the other if he goes down, it's not quite as savage as it may sound. Let's go, let's go. Then, of course, there's the single-player campaign. Modern Warfare 2 picks up five years after the end of Call of Duty 4 and deals with the conflict between Russia and America. It's around five hours long on the default difficulty setting, and it's a tightly packed adventure full of all kinds of crazy stuff. There are vehicle bits, stealth sequences, and overall, plenty of opportunities to stab enemies in the face, which is key. I'm sort of deliberately talking around the story, but I think I can safely say that like previous games in the series, it jumps between multiple perspectives. So in one level, you'll be in Afghanistan, moving through dangerous urban areas, and in the next, you'll be a member of Task Force 141, working an undercover op that takes you into a pretty messed up situation. Then hey, why not bounce it back to Washington, D.C., where things aren't going very well at all? The globetrotting is standard for the course, but the story feels like it's been kicked up into some kind of action movie overdrive. The events of the previous game felt kind of plausible, but this one gets a little too far over the top. It's like the developers sat down and watched the execution and nuke sequences from their last game for an hour straight, then decided they needed to have something that makes that sort of impact every 45 minutes or so. It starts to get a little exhausting, but that doesn't take away from the gameplay. Druid. Hostile moving to the center of the showers. I got eyes on target. 
Modern Warfare 2 subscribes to the more and better theories of sequel design. A lot of it will feel very familiar, and in a way that makes it a little less impressive than COD4 was when it exploded back in 2007. But the design decisions that have altered the multiplayer, along with the new Special Ops mode, make this a more complete package that should finally retire the last two Call of Duty games, which are still incredibly popular online. I mean, dude, you can shoot down UAVs. Now that I've done that and all the other cool things that have changed about the multiplayer, Call of Duty 4 feels completely obsolete. Okay. <sighs>